And just as sort of your final thoughts there, is there ever a kind of an offer on the table that New Mexico may become a state during this period? There's quite a bit of talk about that. And, and there's, there's a lot of talk uh, right at the outset of the Civil War about you know, New Mexican statehood and can we trade New Mexican statehood? Can we offer New Mexican statehood as a slave state to keep the, uh, the slave South and the Union? Um, you know, as we know, all those negotiations came to naught. The Crittenden Compromise got shot down, but it was definitely on the table for a while because it, at the time slavery was legal in New Mexico. Um, and so if it came into the Union as a state, there's reason to, reason to suspect that it could have been a slave state. Hmm. That's interesting because I usually I'm like, we, we, we don't admit California, New Mexico, Arizona until the 1920s because the alien character of its population in part two was the large number of Hispanics. So it's, um, what really holds it back? Um, holds, uh, oh, I mean, I, I think what, what held it back from statehood in the late 19th century was that, you know, white American congressmen weren't comfortable with making a state that had a large Latino population or a territory that had a large Latino population a state. Um, I think what holds it back in the antebellum era is just uh, a relatively small population mm. and much bigger political fish, fish to fry in Congress. Right. 